In this video, we will be talking about error and uncertainty. Um, this is as the title here suggests that this is the part one and I'll be making two parts of it and the first part as the title says um, will be error, we'll be talking about error and types of errors. In the second part, we will, we will talk about uncertainty and, the, and you will get the idea, the difference between error and certainty in the part two of it. And as for now, we'll be concentrating on the error. But first and foremost, let's head towards the uh, introduction of it. And also, as you have noticed that I'm using um, slides for it. Um, I think mostly, um, partially the reason not partially the reason that my new videos are longer take half an hour to explain things so i think slides will be better so i can i can give you i can explain topics uh, more clearly and also i have to write things write things uh, myself and that take a lot of time plus my writing is also not very good so it might be a little harder for harder for you to recognize what I'm writing. So let's get going, shall we, with the introduction of error and uncertainty. So introduction. When it comes to measurements, error and uncertainty hold significant importance in physics because we already know that. The whole foundation of physics is based on measurement, on measuring quantities. So that's the reason error and certainty are really, really important in the field of physics. But even if they are, the, the irony here is, even if they are the most important uh, top, uh, things in physics, the important words in physics, these two are the most misinterpreted interpreted ones because I think many of the most of the students say, think that oh error and certainty they basically the, the same things they are not the same things because they relate to a different set of problems in physics when when we are trying to deal with, with measuring a quantity or something so they are really important and they are used for two really different purposes so they have they are different and they are used these terms are used for different kind of problems when you are trying to de uh, measure when you are trying to measure a quantity in physics so as i said part one is about error and the types of errors so let's get started with error so error so the simplest um, definition of our error can be you can say as the difference between the actual value actual value and the observed value as I have write it down, true value, which is the true value, the actual value, and the observed value that we are trying to measure. So these words, actual, measured, uh, actual, true, and observed, measured value. So that's the difference, the basic, the simplest definition of either can be difference between actual and the observed value. You can, you can, actually say as as you are already know i hope i think you have already seen shorts videos of memes which basically says expectations versus reality so basically the same thing expectation you want that that accurate value but the reality when you are trying to measure something it's different so that that difference is called an error so error the consequence of it so the outcome of error can be can lead to inaccurate calculations you already know inaccurate calculations the you want to measure something the speed of some of something or the length of something but it, it, it but the value is hugely different than the actual actual value and misinterpret the meaning of our result and so on so here i want you to 
focus on this word, misinterpret the meaning of a result and so on. What do you mean by misinterpret, misinterpret the meaning? Uh, uh, I hope you have seen, um, I'll give you the example of it. I hope you have seen a short video. I think many people have seen that short video, which is basically a meme that um, the speed, uh, the airplane takeoff speed that I calculated in my physics result is about minus 250 kilometer per hour. So, I hope you have you have all seen the um, uh, video of it. The velocity that I calculated of my of the plane taking off in my physics time was minus two fifty kilometer per hour. So here is minus, which is basically a huge problem. <laughs> it's that the plane is not taking off. The plane is going in reverse direction. So even the sign, if even if they are different signs. It just changes. It just changes the whole meaning of a result. So that's how how you should be careful of errors. And errors are many. There are many types of errors, but we can just encapsulate these errors into only two categories, which is random error and systematic error. You, uh, I hope you get the idea. From the from the words by themselves, random error and systematic error. Now let's go to first to random error. Okay, so random error uh, occurs. Random error occurs when repeated measurements give out give off different values. So random here error is that you are trying to measure something, but every time you measure something, the value is different. Actually. Let me just say to clarify that the uh, that the values that the measurements uh, that the uh, value that you get at the end of the result is random. You can say different and random. So every time you you measure something again and again, the the uh, the difference in them is is random. It's not kind of in um in a sequential wise. It's really a different result. It's a random result. So the second point here is this type of error is unpredictable, uh, unpredictable and unavoidable because of its random nature. It's unpredictable. You don't know what's it's, what's happening, and it's unavoidable. No matter how much you can, you try to try to uh, wipe out the random error. It's, it stays it stays there and it's unpredictable as I said it's not sequential it's random so anything any kind of error is going on with with the uh, with the experiment so random error affects the position the precision of an experiment so given the random nature of it, there are many many factors unknown factors but the most um that we we can say that we already know that comes into this into these the categories are these ones these three ones which is environment and in an experience and instructions not following instructions and procedures um i think yeah Mm. Actually, a while ago, while I was explaining, I thought I missed something. Hopefully not. Okay, cleared. Um, this is the random error. Um, next we will go to systematic error. So systematic error occurs when there is a consistent. Here is the word. Consistent difference between. That's good. There is a consistent difference between the results when taking measurements. Of course, we already know that the difference is there. But instead of that uh, value that you get uh, random, it's consistent. It, it has a, a sequence. So, for example, you get uh, you get a result. For example, you are trying to measure something, the length of something, and you get an error about 
zero point five centimeter. Okay, okay, you get another value. You 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 test it out again, and the difference is the same. No matter. Okay, you already know that there's an error, but instead of measuring the length of that particular thing, I take another thing and measure the length of the of that again, and trying to compare it, I. I get the same difference 0.5 centimeters. So we, we know that difference here is the same 0.5 cent centimeters. So that's the sequence. And and in the random error, we already know that they are unpredictable because given the random nature of it, but systematic error because of its uh, sequence, the uh, consistent difference, we can, we can completely uh, uh, solve that problem. So, as the name suggested, systematic error, it mostly occurs in measuring instruments. The, so, so, that's the thing. Random error can happen with the whole operators of the experiment, the whole experiment you can you are doing, but systematically, uh, syst systematic error is mostly limited to the instruments that you are with the with the with the instrument that you are measuring. And as I said, is predictable. So systematic error affects the accuracy of an experiment. I know maybe a lot of people uh, won't get the idea. So you said random error, uh, random error affects precision, while systematic affects accuracy. This is a whole another topic: precision versus ac accuracy. As I said at the at the start of the video, that. Most students misinterpret error and uncertainty to the same thing. Well, precision and accuracy is a whole another level of problem. So this, so actually, a precision and accuracy are the most in, in, in misinterpreted terms because students say they are the same things. But then again, I'm gonna stop here and hopefully we'll make a video of it of precision and accuracy. But let's stay stay true to, to this to this um, lecture or video. You can you can say. So let's get going. So I already know. Uh, so the as we know that it uh, occurs in measuring instruments. So the possible causes can be zero error. Basically, zero error. What uh, what I'm saying is that you have not reset the instrument to zero. Poor calibration, meaning that you have not compared it to calibrated it with another accurate uh, instrument, and the instrument uh, limit uh, limitations. So how accurately uh, the instrument the instrument can measure? If an if an experiment allows you, if an experiment requires it to the results to be more accurate, then you can't uh, do the experiments with an ex experiment that is limited in accuracy that just cannot go to that um to, uh, to that expectations that you are trying to uh, measure some measure something so here's the uh, the topic uh, the random error and its types uh, random error and systematic error but then again i want you to i want you guys to have a complete understanding of it so let's throw in uh, some experiment i hope um you have done the experiment in high school or university or college or, or something and some other ins education institute um the one i'm talking about is the um, simple pendulum you already know how you might have done it you have taken because um but you, as you have done if hopefully hopefully you have done the experiment you already know that when you take when you calculate the time period of the simple pendulum every time you take uh, the measurement the time period of it the result won't be the same already you already know if you have done the experiment so let's uh, try to dig in and try and try to check what types of what kind of errors can be uh, can be uh, affecting this type of experiment we already know that it's random and systematic and we're gonna dive into their subcategories as I um, explained uh, before. Okay. So first, with the random error, random error in the simple pendulum can be temperature, 
humidity and air inexperience as i said inexperience not pressing the stop watch when the bar comes back to it, to its original position for example uh, this was its uh, original position from where we um, from where we uh, threw the ball or um, let go of the ball and it came back to its original position you, you did not press the stopwatch uh, at time so basically this whole vaulting basically goes to one simple word that can be said as reaction time that your reaction time is slow and how you can improve your reaction time by, by experience and not following the instructions releasing the ball ab abruptly rather than a free rather than freely at an angle that you did not stretch the ball so the string isn't stretched like this and you just throw you just didn't throw it freely you threw it with a force so that's not not gonna give you the actual value and as i said system uh, random error deals with the whole experiment uh, the whole apparatus of the experiment the, and now jumping into systematic error here we already know that systematic error mostly occurs in measurement instruments so what's the measuring instrument here you already guessed it it's the stopwatch here so that's the major instrument so systematic we already know that the error will be in the stopwatch um what are the errors one is zero error not to be setting as i said not to setting the stopwatch to is zero poor calibration not calibrating with another accurate stopwatch and instrument limitation stopwatch used has a resolution of 0 0.1 uh, second so resolution meaning the smallest quantity that it can measure resolution the smallest quantity that an instrument can measure but what if our experiment requires a, uh, a more uh, small quantity to be measured for example 0 0.01 second here already said that it only has a resolution of 0 0.1 second so we would need another stopwatch which is more that can uh, that can measure a, a, a more smaller quantity so that's the limitation and i hope you get the all, all idea so just sum it up um sum it up the whole uh, part one of the uh, uh, part one of it here difference between random and systematic error so random error already know slight random as i said slight basically meaning although it is random but even if you try to minimize every single error there is there will always be a difference and that can be random so slight random differences right random differences between measurements while the systematic error we know consistent differences between measurements random error given the random nature of it it is unpredictable but as we know systematic error deal uh, occurs in many many instruments so it is predictable it affects the position the random error but systematic error affects accuracy it cannot be fully a random error cannot be fully eliminated but systematic error can be eliminated because it deals with the uh, the measuring instrument so what are the solution what are the some what are some things that we we can we can try to prevent random error and systematic error so the solution one is for random error is doing the measurements in a controlled environment hopefully you know the um, definition of control environment basically that there is a no interrupt uh, interrupt uh, interruptance from the environment like the temperature is at room temperature there is um, the density of the air is, is is controlled everything is controlled that basically meaning the environment does not affect it second is taking average so meaning we take multiple we take multiple measurements 
and then take its average to minimize it to minimize error where random error number three is following guidelines and procedure that you follow the proper guidelines and procedure when doing that experiment experiment to get the accurate and precise results the solution for systematic error or uh, knowledge on instruments limitation you have a proper knowledge of how of the instrument limitations using properly calibrated instrument that is properly calibrated with another accurate instrument number three using the instrument correctly you know the procedure the you know how to use it correctly because if you don't use that instrument correctly that it will just ruin the whole measurement of the experiment yet that again which affects the accuracy of it and first one to be clarified knowledge on students instrument lim limitation meaning that you know that 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 the experiment that the experiment that i'm trying to do has this um has recommended this instrument of this accuracy to be used so the instrument that i'm using meets checks all the requirements so you have to have a proper knowledge on instrument limitations okay that's it and even if um i try to sp speed it out i will try to do as best as best i can still as i am recording this video is about 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 20 minutes have passed so i hope you have uh, enjoyed this video found it informative and part two will be the uh, in uncertainty and the its difference between error and i hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative and for um if you like the video um, make sure to like and subscribe to my channel and i'll be making part two hopefully i upload the part two of it sooner and yeah um, thank you everyone for watching this video up till up to the very end of it thank you very much and i will see you guys soon in the next video thank you